Let's get rolling. Let's see where we're at today. I don't know. I think I'm gonna do some kind of like hex bar and legs again. I'll try to do that. Let's see how it goes. Yeah, workouts have been kind of weird. I was doing some like chest and chest and back stuff with my dad over the weekend. They came to visit. Just an impromptu little visit it was awesome. Very nice. So yeah, today I'm probably gonna do some kind of some kind of leg thing. Yep. Oh. Well, I just don't, well, from what Amon is saying, he's saying that Quinn is taking an estrogen supplement, so I don't know why you would supplement with estrogen. That seems like not a good idea. Maybe it's supposed to be like an estrogen blocker, but any sort of like supplement that you take, that's just like a normal legal supplement is not really gonna have it, that much of an impact, so I don't know. I kind of think Quinn is just like, Doing this for content. <laughs> You're kind of doing like like off the wall stuff that people disagree with, just to sort of like create a, a uh, you know like a whoa that create an effect. We'll see. I don't know. Hopefully he doesn't hurt himself. What time do I usually train? Usually I've been training in the morning, but um, I'm thinking I'm gonna start changing my schedule to train in the afternoon. Yeah, my head's jacked. He's keeping it lean these days, but um, yeah, I think I'm gonna start training in the in the afternoon. So I'm gonna start the gaming stream up early in the morning and go from there. We'll see how it goes. See how it goes. Yep, just keep training evenly. It'll it'll work itself out, Jones. Yep. What happens? Try to have some early sessions. Yeah, I usually work out early in the morning, but um, I think I'm gonna switch that up. I'm gonna start working out uh, probably at the end of my day rather than the beginning. Let's see if that has any sort of impact. Biggest suggestion for losing weight: track your intake of calories, maintain a deficit. Exclamation mark. Fat loss is what I recommend you start with. More running and cardio is fine if you enjoy running and you want to build cardiovascular endurance and like exercising that way. But yeah, it, exclamation mark. Fat loss teaches you how to. Learn how to put your food on a food scale, track that info in my fitness pal, and stay in the calorie goals that you have set for yourself. Then of course, trial and error and adjust those numbers as necessary to actually achieve fat loss. Yep. Yeah, Jones, like I said a second ago, just train evenly. Yep, train evenly. You'll be all right. Especially if you're training with dumbbells, you'll be all right. Just continue to train evenly. It'll work itself out. You'd be all right. Could just do an arms and shoulder workout today, too. I don't know, we'll see. My workouts have been feeling kind of whack recently. They've been feeling kind of off. I feel like I haven't been sleeping enough or something. But we'll get in the gym and do something today. We'll see where we're at. I think I want to do something for legs, but it might just be a little bit of isolation to get us started. But I'm going to warm up upper body first. Just to chat and wake up a little bit. Certainly good, John. Certainly good. Plant-based powerlifters. I mean, I don't eat meat. I'm not a powerlifter, but certainly can be done. If that's what you're asking, yeah. What's up, Carol? What's up? What's up? Started so tracking your calories. I'm surprised to find that I'm not typically reaching 2K. That's pretty low. Pretty low. Yep. Yo, hey, is Thanks for the prime, man. Big flex for you. Appreciate it, man. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not vegan, um, but I haven't eaten meat, so it's fine. Yep. And Lazy Turtle, 43 big ones too, man. Holy moly. You guys are popping off this morning. Thank you. Appreciate it, guys. I was going to warm up the shoulders. Thought you eat chicken? 
I mean, I have in the past, but not over the past, like, almost two years. Yep. I built up with a non-vegan protein. Right, not not vegan protein, but yeah. Let's swap it over, yep. Yep. The main protein source. I mean, I get protein from a variety of sources, but like you can supplement with whey protein. I, I take like you know two scoops out from my workout. I've been taking some isolate before my workout too. Um, I like this uh, product called Corn Q U O R N. That's good too. This exercise your shoulders pop. What to do about that? I mean, focus on squeezing with your shoulder muscle. Maybe lighten the weight. But I mean, like, you know, your your shoulder is a ball and socket joint, so there's a lot of little stuff rolling around, right? Relatively small guy, two Ks a lot. All right. Well, remember, it's your goals, right? Ah. Yeah, you can figure out how to get that to work your shoulder muscles, right? Yeah, if it's not hurting, it's okay, I guess. Right? Yep. Um, do I like Eugene Sand? I doesn't, I doesn't really call anything to mind to me. Is that the, the guy in the Olympia trophy? I'm not really familiar with his physique. I, really, I, I do want to do some hex bar today, but... I'm about to pump these old legs over here for a little bit just to get warmed up. Like I said, I've been feeling weird this week. I think I've just been a little low on sleep. Doesn't help. Um, but yeah, I want to change my schedule. I there's just a few little things I need to figure out how to move around. Mostly like the meetings. Got to figure out how to have my meetings for the day. Maybe, uh, maybe at the end of the day. That, that might work. Usually I do it at the beginning of the day, but, or in between the gaming and the gym stream, but... I don't know. I'll figure it out, but yeah, I want to start streaming the games to start the day, and we'll finish the day with the gym. <laughs> but that could be work. That could be, uh, that could be a workable option, I should say. That might work. Good work. Okay. I think I've got I think I got my bot working the right way. I'm gonna turn off that uh that timer for right now. Uh, but I think it's it's working, it's working. It's good. It's doing what it's supposed to do. That's cool. Good stuff. You feel better body-wise without meat? I feel good, yeah. I think so. What was that game source? I think we're gonna swap over to that, yeah. Yep. Yep. That's the plan. Yep. Oh. Start doing the, the, the gaming first, like early, and then do the gym in the afternoon. Yeah. I think it's a, a switch that, that can do a few good things. We'll see. We'll test it out. Gonna feel a little good with some meals in? Yeah, maybe, but I'm also gonna have been streaming for, you know, what? Nine hours at that point, eight hours at that point, so we'll see. Thoughts on a CD for Korea? I have no idea about that. I haven't done any research. My suspicion is it probably doesn't do much, but maybe. Yeah, the workouts might be good with meals in. It's gonna be hot. It's gonna be hot. But uh, yeah, we'll see. We'll see, we'll see. But it, I, I think it's, it might it potentially be better for the stream, which I think is the main thing, so. 
There's the, uh, the, the, the downside is potentially less effort on YouTube. And I have to sort of reschedule some of my meeting times. My meeting time slot will need to change. But it could potentially be very helpful for the gaming stream and potentially for the gym stream. Stream-wise, the, the workouts may suffer because I'll be already kind of tired from the day, but having more food in and getting just, you know, saving caffeine for that would probably be good. So, that's what I'm thinking. That's what I'm thinking. It, it, it could be good. It could be good. It's a little, a little different, but it could be good. Not doing that today, but might get into that like starting this week. Cold. A little, a little cold still. I'll wait, I'll wait till it warms up a little bit more before we pop that door open. But yeah. So, Jim Crew, uh, Jim Crew, just be aware of that. We'll be streaming games around this time, I think. And then we'll be streaming later today. That'll be, uh, that'll be a, a plan that I'm working towards. But yeah, I think we'll, we'll eventually get used to it. But yeah, that's what I'm thinking. So it'll be like the gaming stream starts around 5 or 6 a.m. And then the, uh, the gym stream will start probably around like 2 to 30 p.m. That's what I'm thinking. Mix it up a little. Yeah, so if, if, it's, if it's real hot, those summertime workouts might be a little bit brutal, but we'll see how it goes. There, there's, there's some advantages to it. Gonna be some kind of leg day. Switch, yeah. My sleep schedule, my like my day, my my awake schedule is the same. Like my daily schedule is the same, just changing the work that I do during it. Person missed the gym streams. Are you not gonna be able to make the uh, the 2 p.m. gym streams? Yeah. Gotta do what I gotta do. I'm gonna try it out. Yeah. So nasty. Just trying to wake up and warm up a little bit today. But that's gonna be a little period of adjustment for me trying to figure out how to optimize for those kind of workouts. We'll see how it goes. See how it goes. I gotcha. I gotcha, yeah, I gotcha. Well, fair enough. Well, we'll be able to see on the gaming stream at least. And I got the games channel as well, so. Always check in on that if you want to, but yeah, I feel you, I feel you, I feel you. I just think that this has potential. And, and it seems like now's a good time to switch it up, so. We're gonna do it. I bet. Grinding as always, man. Making moves as always. Kicking ass as always. Ugh. How about you? Ugh. A little under-recovered this week, but that's all right. On Fair Lena. Fair Lena. Which is a fun one. Good old Perlina.
Thank you, one week for the 50 months, man. Big flex for you. Like I just switched up the schedule for Yeah. I think it's about time. We've been doing a lot of different stuff, and this is like, ah, oh, let's just kind of trying to figure out what what's a good sort of move to make next. I'm going to try this one. I mean, I didn't play BC back in the day, but I mean, this is pretty funny, huh? That was a play. <laughs> you know we don't, dude. Thank you so much for the 10 months, man. How are your gains going for yourself, man? No, I, I, I enjoy it like that. I've been feeling a little bit rough this week. But like I said, I think it's just not quite getting enough sleep. I shouldn't say this week, it's just kind of like weekend. That's okay, though. We'll push on through. Lift big, get big. Yep. You went up pounds last week when you carved up. I mean, you, you probably didn't gain like pounds of like body mass, right? I'm just if you if you went from eating not very many carbs to eating a lot of carbs, you probably just filled up your body with energy. That's all. It's fuel tanks. Uh, we're gonna I'm gonna trim out just a little bit. Just a little bit. Yeah. And sorry, we got uh, we have auto mod turned up to four because we have a. I just did that in anticipation of the front page stream, so you guys have to be like extra PG today <laughs> in the chat to not have auto mod get mad at you. Yeah. 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 Embrace like that is still glowing good. During the game stream, what what can I allow? F bombs and mild swearing, okay? I don't think so, no. I think it's like full PG, yeah. Yeah. I think we're talking like full PG. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome, overly. Or overnight dad, that's awesome. That'd be real fun. Yeah, we're, we're, we're keeping it pretty tight for the front page, Lance. Keeping it pretty tight. What's up, Moose? Oh. But that, that should be from about 12 to 2 is the range on there. So, yeah. You're 32 and can't gain weight? Well, I mean, you can gain weight, but I mean, if, you're, if it's not your goal to gain weight, then, you know, health-wise or otherwise, all good. But you absolutely can gain weight. But yeah, if it's not your goal, then no worries. That's everything camp, though, right? It's from a legend, doctor. Legend fitness. Uh, I'm just gonna spend a little time on the isolation machine today. I think we will eventually get the hex bar moving, but I'm just warming up, I guess. But yeah, today should be a fun day. Just trying to get warmed up out here as usual. Try to get the, the power flow and get the vibes right. I mean, if you never really focused on your, your food, then yeah, probably, you know, could have ended up not really seeing the results. But if you start focusing on your food, I mean, it stops becoming a mystery why you're not gaining weight, right? Yep. 
neural connections we talk about. I mean, like, from all the work you did, like, training in the military, is that what you mean? Right. Thank you, one of you looking at muffinology. Thank you, dude. Big flex for both you guys. Appreciate it, man. Well, I mean, as far as I understand, muscle memory is not just a neurological thing, it's like muscle tissue. As far as I understand, you know, it's easier to regain muscle than it is to gain in the first place. And I don't think that's just like neural, right? I don't think so. So. But yeah, not gaining any weight is just not eating enough. Definitely. Oh, that's sweet, Lance. This I appreciate that, YouTube. Good looking out. Yeah, I, I want to believe that, we're, that the work we're putting into YouTube is, uh, you know, going to pay off. We talk about it a lot. But I think that's one of the things I'm probably going to do differently is quit stressing about that as much. Just say, all right, eff it. Let's just, let's just focus on Twitch a little bit more. Not give up on YouTube by any means. Just like, instead of, you know, sitting there fussing around up with it for like an hour, hour and a half in the morning, say, I'm just gonna get. I'm just gonna start my stream up for the games instead. And just game and work out later. And I'll fuss around with YouTube. Maybe in the evening before I go to bed or something. Just have have some videos ready to rock and just put them live in the morning and not really fuss about it in the morning. So that's what I mean. Is it's gonna sort of take a little bit off of the uh, uh, take a little bit off the business and YouTube side of things for me. But uh, we have help with YouTube. We have help with business stuff. So it should be okay anyway. Whatever. Just get to work on the stream and really try to, you know, apply our efforts to uh, our stream, which is like, you know, big time gains. Yeah. That's what I'll say is a huge factor to prevent it. Oh, sure. Yeah, I mean, I understand. I get it. Yeah. But the good news is, is if you can just be a robot and just do what is required. And sometimes just doing doing the work that is required to achieve a goal can help your mental state. But I mean, I understand. I mean, there's a reason why I am as diligent about my training and diet and recovery as I can because it helps me stay healthy mentally and emotionally too. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah. I mean, your situation is definitely more dire than mine, having been in, in combat, lost, you know, lost, you know, friends. I mean, I understand that's. I don't understand, but I can't understand that that situation is very different than mine. Yeah. I mean, I've had friends in the military who really struggle with that. So I'm sorry. But by the same token, it's like, you gotta live on and be your best that you can be for them, you know? That, that's what they would want, I would imagine, right? And once again, for me, Doing the things that I know that I can do that are good, that are in my control, like getting exercise, nailing my diet according to my goals, and getting good sleep, those things help me out. So, yeah. But the stresses that I undergo are nothing like what you're going through, so. Maybe I should just shut up, but I'm just, you know. Those, those have all, that's always helped me out. And, like I, and the only thing I was encountering is the idea that you can't do something like gain weight, which is like super simple. So you can do that. And if that's one of your goals, and if focusing on that and doing the work required to achieve that goal every day is something that helps you out mentally and emotionally, that could be great. But I'm sorry, man. War is fucked. It's just poison. You know? I'm sorry. And speaking of the poison of war, me and Jen are watching a documentary. 
last night on Netflix called Kiss the Ground. That was about like how sort of changing our farming methods in particular, but changing just our relationship with like, like actual soil in the world can be one of the things that dramatically reduces the amount of carbon in the atmosphere, which is awesome. But one of the things that was messed up is that like the poisons that were developed during World War II to be used as weapons are, are like something that we use now as pesticides. So it's just war just creates this like evil dark magic that we then plague the world with for like short term gain but long term destruction. And it's like, have we learned nothing from these like, you know, high fantasy stories from these like tales passed on from generations about like dark magic born out of war? Repurposed for, you know, purposes on later that like destroy everything. That, that's not how they phrase it, but that's like how I, I just can't, as somebody who's just steeped in fantasy, I just can't help but like think of it that way. But yeah, Kiss the Ground, you should watch that. It's very interesting. Very interesting, because there's all these, there's all these ways of trying to reduce our carbon footprint, like reduce the amount of carbon that we put into the air or whatever, the atmosphere, but there's not really a lot of good ways to actually reduce the amount of carbon that's already there. But basically just taking better care of the soil so that plants can grow and thrive will help us actually pull carbon out of the atmosphere and help reverse um, climate change. Which is really cool. They showed like a graph of what happens during the spring when farmers are tilling their soil and killing all the top layer and all the, you know, all the life that lives in the soil. And the carbon in the atmosphere goes nuts. And then in the summer, when plants start to grow, it, goes, it gets sucked way down in terms of the carbon in the atmosphere. It's very interesting. So there's farmers who are no longer tilling their soil and, and obviously no longer using pesticides and stuff to kill all the little microbes and bacteria and things that live in the soil that help plants survive and grow and pull the carbon out. And they started doing like different sustainable farming methods of growing lots of different plants and they grow like their crop plants in addition to other plants that provide like ground cover. And they have like, they use like their cattle and livestock to systematically like only um, like feed on certain little areas. So they, they, they stomp all the grass down, they eat it, they you know, urinate, poop and, and, and everything to fertilize. And then they go move them to somewhere else and they only have them eat in these certain areas every day and they don't return to those particular areas for like six to nine months so that the plant life can like flourish and all the little ecosystems that live in the dirt can thrive. It's really cool. Circular farming, yeah. Like Gabe Brown, that, yeah. Yeah, he, I think he was in that. Really smart farmer guy, really cool. So that, that got me fired up. So me and Jenny wanna buy a farm now. And I'm like, man, we are definitely the kind of people that just get pumped up off of seeing one Netflix documentary. But I'm, I'm a big nature boy, at least growing up I was. So that seemed really cool to me, like, re, like you know, healing the earth. Like buy a big plot of land and just like plant it out. And like, that'd be cool. But I just feel not very good today, but whatever, I'm tired. But that was awesome, that was really cool. I, I thought that was so neat. Yeah. Right, like organic fertilization, like composting and stuff, yeah. Definitely, yeah, so that was so cool. And it can make a big difference in like 20 years if we start working on that, right? It's very cool. Regenerative agriculture, yep, exactly, yeah. That, 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 that was so cool to me. So cool to me. And it's, uh, it's like economically viable too. You make a lot more money that way, farmers do. Because the way farmers do it right now is they're just subsidized by the government to, you make at least this much if you grow these crops. And what the government should be doing is um, giving incentivization to take better care of your land with the regenerative farming. That's what they should be doing. That'd be really interesting, right? That'd be cool. Well, we already grow our own produce, but not on like a large scale. Like Jenny just has like some box gardens that she's been taking care of. Growing some carrots and blueberries and lettuce and strawberries. Yeah. But yeah, that's, that's really neat. This is creating just lush environments for plants to thrive and for the world to heal. I mean, that's really cool. That got me fired up. Ooh. 
So yeah, look, look into that. Look, look up Kiss the Ground on Netflix. And then you can look into regenerative farming. Really cool stuff. I mean, like, we're always, we're always looking for ways to sort of, like, help heal the world and help prevent climate change or help, you know, scale it back. And this is, like, one of those ways to do it that, like, could make a, lo a huge difference if, like, policy was changed to encourage farmers to do regenerative farming rather than, like, the crazy tilling and pesticide use and just producing one single crop and just, like, making the earth barren after a couple of harvests, you know? It'd be crazy what we could do to heal the world. And it's basically just by growing plants and letting letting the soil and the plant life do what it's supposed to do without us tearing it up and killing all the little ecosystems that are present underneath the, the, the dirt, right? So instead of having like these distinct areas of crops that you just like torch the soil and these distinct areas of livestock production where they just produce a ton of greenhouse gases and the animals are just like, you know, stuck in a pen all day, just like, you actually say, all right, we're gonna grow a bunch of different crops and we're gonna let the livestock be on those fields, be healthy, happy outside, help keep the earth happy, produce healthy crops and healthy, you know, livestock, right? It just, I mean, it just makes sense. You gotta do, kind of do it like how it was in the past. Let the earth be healthy. It's cool. That got me really fired up watching that. Cause I, I feel like I haven't been as much of a nature boy as I, as I was in the past cause I spent more time working on my content creation projects. But when I was young, I spent all, I spent all the time outside. I'd go play all day and then come back and play some video games and go to the gym with my dad and stuff. But I mean, I was like, I was outside all the time. And then as I grew up, I started to focus a little bit more on, on sports and stuff. But running was like, I mean, you spent a lot of time outside running. I loved it, so. It's good. Have you been hard yet? Yeah, I think so. I think so. But yeah, so look that up. Look that up and, and, and spread that idea around. And let me know if there's like, I'd like to, because it seems like such a good idea, and I'd like to hear about potential conflicts with that. Because obviously, you know, in documentaries, they usually only present like one viewpoint, but it seems like, you know, pretty cool to me. It seems really interesting. And it seemed like a, a real viable way to reverse the effect of what we've been doing to the environment in a big way, right? So. And as, as high fantasy players, I'm sure we all know the goal when you go to some like desert, like, you know, desert area that's been ravaged by some sort of like evil magic is to try to heal it, right? And that's kind of where we're at right now. All, all this technology born out of war, like pesticides. I mean, if we could find a way to say, yeah, that stuff was, was started off as a poison to kill people, and now we're using it to, you know, keep bugs off of plants, we have to genetically engineer the plants and not die to the poison. You find this poison literally in the drinking water now, and it's linked to hurting babies because it passes through the babies through mother's breast milk. It's like, we gotta figure out what to do about that. And if the solution is to take better care of your soil by growing a wide variety of plants and having animals, you know, just feed off of the undergrowth and do their thing to stomp it down and to till it up. This like, not like till it up like a till, but you know, stir up the soil a little bit, you know, do their thing with their excretion processes on there and that helps heal the world. Like that's awesome. That's super cool, right? Yeah, I think I'm a little bit late to the planting a tree party, but yeah, there was a, a while where the, the, all these content creators were doing big charity events to plant like a million trees and stuff like that. That was cool. But, I mean, this, the idea sounds awesome to me, so we'll see. The industry breeds optimization. Right, I understand, like, farmers are like, if I grow corn and beans, I'm guaranteed a profit before I even, you know, plant, right? That's something that they said, but it's like... If the government didn't say, all right, we're gonna give you a baseline price on these foods, 
to just like, and, and instead be like, we're going to, um, we're going to incentivize sustainable growth methods in regenerative farming because that's going to help take care of the world and you still be able to, you know, produce food. Like that's important because one of the freaky things that it said in a documentary, whether this is true or not, is that we've got about 60 years left before we're toast if we keep doing what we're doing farming wise. We have about 60 harvests left worth of food on this planet if we keep doing what we're doing. Now, I mean, maybe that was an, 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 an extreme statement, but that's pretty freaky, don't you think? Yeah, you know, see, that's what they're saying is that the amount of the amount of carbon that can be stored in the ground is like twice as much as plants and water can store together, right? That's not true, laws, right? So that's that's what I'm saying. Like usually a documentary presents like one kind of aggressive and potentially shocking viewpoint. So if you know something more than that, that's I'm, I'm interested in having that discussion because right now I'm like, wow, that's intense. <clears throat> so have you been interested in occult knowledge? I mean, not really, no. I'm not sure what you mean. <laughs> but not really, no. You're, when bulking, should you care about a little bit of body fat? I mean, if you want to slow down your surplus, you can, but some body fat comes with the, with the, you know, the process. Yep. Well, the thing is, there won't be any worms to feed on you because they're all going to be killed by tilling and pesticides, so, yeah. Replace the back across all this stuff, problem solved? Not really, because the farming methods are still destroying the earth, right? That's the, that's the thing, is that like tilling and pesticide use just makes like healthy earth just barren after a while, right? You just like, you just pump it with nitrogen so that plants can grow for like a couple seasons and then the earth is just toast. That's the problem, I think. Right? It, even if that timeline is untrue, scientists are already presenting significant evidence that the chemicals we ingest are extremely harmful. Yeah. I mean like the, the main pesticide that we use can, is found in drinking water sometimes. And it's been linked to like hurting babies from getting it for their brother, their, their mother's breast milk, just because that's just part of our situation now. So yeah, man. Gotta cut that out. Yep. You grew up on a farm, and even the most uh, backwards people use sustainable farm methods these days. So I think that, like so most people aren't tilling or using pesticides. Is that what you're saying? I hope so. But tilling and pesticides were kind of like one of the main things that this documentary identified as really hurting the ecosystems that are present in the soil. Have you looked up regenerative, like do you know what I'm talking about? I mean you probably do know about regenerative farming, right? Because this, this is like all, this is like really new to me, so I'm like, whoa, this is crazy. It's all really new to me. I didn't realize that it was such a big deal. And it does seem like a really big deal, both in terms of the dire consequences of not doing better, but also because of the absolutely insanely massive upside if you do actually do better, so. That's kind of blowing my mind. Especially because like, you know, as somebody, like I said, steeped in high fantasy, I'm like, wow, we can heal the earth this way. And it just, it just, the idea just feels so good to me, you know? I would love that. To be able to, this is this is like, you're looking for those ways to heal the earth. Like, how can we do, how can we fix what we've done? And it's like, this is like a super clear way to do it, right? Yeah. Everyone I grew up in rural South Dakota used uh, no-till drilling and none of the pesticides. That's awesome. That's really good. I'm glad to hear that. I'm glad to hear that. That's so good. More of that. Yeah, more of that. I'm glad. Like I said, this is the first time hearing of it and realizing it's such a big deal. And so now I'm really excited about it, so. Yeah. Gets me hyped up. Like I said, like re regenerating the earth is sounds like is awesome. Yeah. 
So I would say that the documentary didn't spend as much time like demonizing the big companies that are doing this. They definitely mentioned, they definitely like talked about it and said how it how it's bad, like how it, it does harm. But I think that where we were getting to, what we were focusing on is is how cool the process can be of the regenerative farming. Give it a look. It's called a Kiss the Ground. Yeah. Yeah, Scraps, that's what I want to do. That's what I'm saying is I want to, like, buy land and set up, like, a regenerative farming, like, plant life and then just, like, sell, like, the, the plot for the day for people to bring their livestock in to eat it and, like, tramp it down and, like, save them money on feed but have us be able to make some money to make that whole project sustainable. That's the dream right there. That's where I'm at right now. So I wonder if that would work. You're like, okay, we're gonna sell this plot, which is the feed lot for today. People bring their, their livestock in, their, their cows, their goats, whatever, to just munch on that little area and then stomp it down and, you know, ex you know, do their, uh, do their thing on there, do their little their peeing and pooping on the ground, and then, uh, then you sell the next plot the next day, you know? You, you do kind of probably need a lot of property for that, but still. Kanye's just like this in Wyoming, awesome. Yeah, I'm really fired up about it right now. Have you considered incorporating the philosophy into my own landscape? I mean, I wish, I mean, at this point, I kind of wish we had. Like, we made a decision that we thought was good, which is putting turf down because we're in California, which would dramatically reduce our water to try to, you know, water the grass. But basically, like, our yard is, like, turf in, like, a good portion of it. And then, like, on the outside, we have, like, plants growing. And the inside, we have plants growing. And we have, like, trees. Like, Jenny has, like, a bunch of citrus trees, and she's growing vegetables in these big planter boxes and stuff. But we did throw down a lot of turf, and I hope that's not, like, a bad thing. I like turf, though, but yeah. We don't, we don't have, like, a massive yard, though. We're in California, so... We'd like to maybe eventually have like a big plot of land. But we're, we really like our house, so we don't really want to go anywhere right now. Yeah. Oh, it was pretty pricey, but you know, I'm very grateful to you guys for making some like dreams happen like that for us, like a big, nice big yard to play in. And the crazy thing is we did the yard one time and we did the yard a second time and it cost us the same amount. So that was kind of uh, hitting the gut there, but I'll be all right. What's up, Talon? Wanted to get a little bit more play space for Archer. Yeah. But yeah, turf in our little area seems okay, but like creating like a swath, like a huge area of land that can grow naturally would be good. For sure. But yeah, so sort of a little bit Blake, but sort of a not a little bit too, right? Like I don't really know what the, what the impact of turf was. I thought it was gonna be cool because we don't have to water the grass. But we have plants on the outside, and we, we have, like, you know, trees that are growing and stuff, so hopefully that'll help a little bit. But the idea of, like, all these, like, desertified farm areas coming to life again, it seems is so cool to me, right? Yeah, I don't know either, it's true. So that, that got me hyped up, if you couldn't tell. That got me pretty excited. So once again, the documentary is called Kiss the Ground. And the idea that we're talking about is called regenerative farming or whatever, right? You guys, you guys can all join me in my, uh, in my uh, excitement about it. But yeah, the no, the no-till, the no-till farming and the and the small, you know, and the and the reduced use of certain pesticides and stuff. That gets me really excited. I'm glad the people around you were doing that when you were talking about people who are farming near where you live back then. That's great, I'm very glad to hear that. Yeah, John Deere sells a big old, big old no-till thing. It's pretty cool. Because it can be done, it, it can make a huge difference, right? It makes a huge difference in a bad way if we don't fit, do things differently. And it makes a huge difference in a positive direction if we do. So it's like a huge upside, but also a huge downside, you know? And it doesn't really seem that hard to do it. It's just like we just need to change the policy. You know? 
If instead of incentivizing specialization of just one crop, you incentivize regenerative farming, subsidizing regenerative farming methods instead of the, you know, if you just produce this much beans, we'll give you this much minimum kind of thing, right? No tills, less says when win. Nice. Yeah. Yep. You guys can work. You guys can look out for if there's any composting being done where you're at too. Yeah. That's awesome, you know. See. Yeah, we have bunnies and lot, we have a lot of lizards in our backyard now. A lot of birds. Yeah. Gyms are back home. They need tips to get back in the gym. Take it easy. Take it slow. Yeah. More composting too. Yeah. We haven't we haven't done that yet, but we're gonna need to look into it. I I really don't like. I really don't like to waste food, and I don't feel like I waste a lot of food. But if we can compost, maybe we will. Yeah, that's what we used to do back in my where I grew up. They take the the, the grass clippings and put it in the back. Yep. Have I talked about it on stream before? Not really. No, I just had my mind blown yesterday by watching that documentary. Like I'm interested in conservation and I'm interested in, you know, doing what we can to take care of the environment. This is just something that I didn't realize was that big of a deal. I just, I just was like, wow, this is new to me. So I'm really fired up about it. So, because like I said, it's like a, like a terrible downside to continue doing what we've been doing but a tremendous upside if we do the regenerative farming. At least that's what it seems like to me. Like I said, I realize that documentaries usually really focus on one side of, the, of things, but I mean, I don't know who's gonna argue against like taking better care of the earth, especially if it's like, you know, also is good for the farming techniques, right? It makes it so we can actually farm without like cranking as much chemicals into the ground as possible to like force a couple good harvests, right? So. You eat really clean and ruin all your progress over the weekends so they get too emotional over food. Seeing therapists about it, one of the, I mean, seeing a therapist is great if you're really, really struggling. But I mean, you should be in a, I would recommend that you eat a diet that allows you to be sustainable so that you don't binge. Like, hit your, hit your macros, hit your calories. Don't have your calories be so bare bones that you binge over the weekend. And don't tell yourself you can't have certain foods in moderation if it calls you to binge over the weekend. But yeah, I mean, seeing a therapist is good. Yep. Yep. Yeah, we do have ornamental grass, like that. we have the turf in our backyard. I would say that our, our swath of land is not very big, but we did do the turf. I thought it would be a good idea because it looks, I, I like the way it looks, like the way it feels, but it's also, for California, it our water, so. What, what are your calories at, Shu? What, what's causing you problems? You guys watch it? Yeah, you should. Yep. You should. Slush, it's called uh, Kiss the Ground. Yep. Right, so what are your total calories at, Shua? But I, it's, yeah, that's, that's super low. Yeah, that's super low calories. How, many, how much weight are you losing per week doing that? And I would also recommend remembering how you feel after you, after you binge eat, you're saying, wow, this feels really bad. I don't like that way I feel. So in the moment when you're like, yeah, this is the time where I can decide whether I can eat shittily or not, you say, no, it makes me feel bad every time I do it, so I'm not gonna do it. And then by building that ability to do that in the moment, you're gonna switch over your default to breaking and binging to your default is to adhere to your diet and say, no thanks, right? Just build that habit, right? Lose one pound a week, yeah, that's fine then. One pound a week isn't too aggressive, I don't think. What's your exercise look like? Yeah. Well, how much do you weigh? And how old are you? And what, what's your cardio look like? Yeah. Hey, 
And I guess what are your goals too? Like why do you want to lose weight? If you're doing two cardio sessions, you could bump that up a little bit just to go for like a daily walk. That might be good. That way you can bump your, the calories you eat up to go for a daily walk. against your diet constantly. Why don't you just go to the lean surplus? Don't waste your time. But like I said, I would also say, recognize that you don't like how you feel after you eat that whole pizza. It's not worth it. So you gotta kind of act with your rational, I've made a decision mind, have that determine how you behave rather than in the moment I feel like doing this right now kind of thing, right? Yeah, belly fat, you probably do. You probably never worked out before. Do you want to have like a lean rip physique? Because if you're not going to ever build any muscle, you're wasting your time. So, get to work. Yeah. Why do you want to weigh 180 pounds? It's pointless. Especially if you're just like struggling to to, to push up against your diet and you're all the time. That's, that's one thing. One, you need to work on your discipline, for sure. Two, don't waste your time trying to get down to 180, be a stick. Build some muscle, be in a small surplus, enjoy it. How long you been dieting? You probably, probably time for a little, little switch in the, the, the uh, objective anyway. Make you some gains, brother. I mean, work on your relationship with food for sure, but. Give yourself a small little surplus. Yeah. Try to do a body recomp? A recomp, recomp is maintenance. Spend a little time in maintenance and focus on training hard and building muscle for a while. How long have you been dieting? Yeah. May as well get after it, man. Focus on building you some muscle. You can call your diet that you've been doing a mini cut. And just get back to work. Get to work on the gains now. Get like 2,500 a day. And make some gains for a bit. Work your calories back up. No use wasting your time in a deficit for no reason if your ultimate goals are to build muscle over time anyway. But I'd also, like I said, recommend that you make your decisions in the moment based off of, you take a moment and say, what are my goals? Who do I want to be? What do I want to do? And you, you formulate your actions in the moment based off of the long-term discipline decision, right? Just because you feel like doing something in the moment doesn't really mean anything, right? You've already, already determined how you behave in those situations. With a, with a clear mind. Uh, you've already made that decision. Now you just gotta stick to it, that's all. Just gotta do it. Now I recommend waiting for everyone to look intake? Yeah. And a lot of it's trial and error, but that, that video is kind of where you get started. A lot of it's gonna be some trial and error. You can even just track what you eat on a normal, normal basis without changing anything and see what it does to your body. If you go up, by a pound, that means over that period of time that you've been tracking, you're in about a 3,500 calorie surplus. But you gotta understand that your weight does fluctuate, so take it with a grain of salt, right? That's how we do it, Andy. Thank you so much, man. Big flex with the 46 months, dude. We're just kind of slogging around today. Slogging around. A light workout talking about 
sustainable farming, regenerative farming. <laughs> but that was really exciting to me. We gotta learn more about that and see what we can do. Gotta figure out what I'm gonna do today for the workout too. Ned, thank you so much. Welcome back for the two months. Thank you, thank you. Never rain. We'll keep it going. Thank you for the prime. We'll take good care of it for you. Yeah, I don't know what I'm doing today. We're just in the gym getting some light leg activation, I guess. Do a couple more quad things and we'll start doing some hamstring things, I guess. I don't know. Just kind of where we're at today. Doing some light ones. A little deload week or something. <laughs> a couple of days of deload. That'll work. Does the auction house lag you no matter what, or is it like the add ons? I don't know. You know, it's basically 10 months. Yep. We're gonna probably, I mean, we don't really have that much food waste, I don't think, but I mean, if we do, we can compost, that'd be fun. Yep. All right, we'll see you later. We'll see you later. Weird. Yeah, I didn't know that. I wonder why. Why the auction house is lagging. Do I need to not use the auction house now? Do you have to stand there and wait for it to go out of your bag or no? All right. I feel like TBC is going to fall to 9.1? Maybe a little. But I feel like eventually, it might be a situation where you can do a little bit of both. We'll see. You're getting 20 pounds of quarantine beer, but sitting at whatever work construction, so diet restriction is tough. Any high energy foods you can get away with? I mean, you just got to track your calories, man. It's about, it's about total intake for the day. I mean, if you got to eat a lot of work to stay, to have good energy, you just might not be eating a whole lot when you get home, I guess. If that's, if that's what it is. Yeah, I feel you. The good news about an active job is it means that you're using a lot of energy, right? But you just gotta sort of plan out your calories for the day in a way that gives you the energy that you need but makes sense with your goals, your goals overall, right? Certainly can be done though, man. And the fact that you're taking an interest in it and starting to work on that problem is a good thing. So keep it up. calorie dense. Fruits and veggies are sort of high volume, lower calories, but there's definitely a big value in that too, right? So. Oh yeah. Man. You do like strawberries though. They're good. Yeah, you can type exclamation mark IRL, I'll give you the playlist. 
Or you can really just go on YouTube and type in Bajira Beginner Workout and you should be able to find some of the old videos of me. I mean, honestly, just working out on machines to start is just fine. That's fine. Just to, just to get you learning how to put some resistance on your muscles. I'm glad that you're getting moving though, man. It's a, it's a fun journey. It's a fun thing to do. I'm glad that you're getting into it. It's a lot of fun though, man. Makes a big difference. So good job doing it. Proud of you. That makes me feel much better. Yeah. I spent a lot of time having running be my main sort of focus when I was in high school and into college. I always lifted weights. Now most folks lifted weights, but I'd actually like to get back into running a little bit more too, so I'm with you, man. I'm with you. So I referenced the debate I had with Quinn. Uh, yeah, it's on my uh, Gaines channel. Uh, Quinn's just recently been really getting into uh, nutrition from a keto sort of hormone manipulation focused thing, which I think is kind of a little bit misguided, unfortunately. There's a lot of people out there putting that kind of information in. So we had a talk where I sort of come from more of the, hey, you know, the energy that you consume is kind of the main difference for what happens with your body's energy storage. <laughs> which is like body fat gain or loss or whatever. And we had to talk about that, which is neat, it was fun. Oh, it's on Vajira Gains, yep. Not a really widely viewed video because it's, you know, on my Gains channel, which is not a really widely viewed channel, but still, kind of neat. Yep. Lifting weights and, and running goes so counter, though. This stuff to hold mass when I have long current systems like running. It just gotta depend on what your goals are. Depends, and you gotta eat enough. What is it? What is it titled? I uh, probably is like, you know, Bajira, I would just type in Bajira Quinn diet discussion on YouTube perhaps if you wanted to quickly find it. But yeah, that was fun. Uh, it was more of a talk, not so much of a debate, just just chatting. Yeah. Hi. I mean, I think that like doing cardio helps me out on like big squat workouts and stuff because you don't get as winded, right? Yeah, there's a lot of like misinformation about dieting out there just to keep people confused and buying products and stuff. That's what it is. That's not it, PJ. Nope. It's, it's like Bajir and Quinn diet discussion. No. Honestly, if searching for Bajir and Quinn diet discussion doesn't link that video, YouTube is just pissing me off. More than usual. <laughs> More than usual. But whatever. Bajira Gains is not a big channel, so. All good. It doesn't? That's ridiculous. That is ridiculous. What is that video titled? Uh, Leg Day Diet Talk with Quinn, yeah. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll change the title then. I mean, maybe I'll change that title real quick. Uh. Maybe I'll change the title real quick. I'll make it even more clear. on YouTube. Thanks, man. Appreciate you doing that. 
Alright, we'll change it up a little bit. Thanks. Right. Thanks for finding it. I'll change the title to be even more just like, hey, this is what it is. Yeah, slow. The basics can take you really far. It's, it's neat, huh? Trying to ease in today. I'll be right back, guys. Thanks for watching. Appreciate it. Knock out those pre rolls to the new piece.
I haven't watched that one yet, Lance. Not quite yet. I think that'd be good for the React content. <laughs> Sup, Smeagol. I don't know, that doesn't hurt my knees, but yeah, like I said, I don't, I don't usually do isolations up real heavy. Yeah, link it to me in the middle of the workout. <laughs> Not sure about that one. Soy? Uh, maybe a little. Not a ton right now, but soy's fine. Soy is fine. Oh. Yeah, I don't, I don't have any fear of hurting my knees with uh, quad extension. I mean, if, it, if it's hurting your knees a certain way, then do it some, some other different way, like get it set up right. And do let it wait, focus on the squeeze. Rather than just like hammering into your joint, I guess, and your tendon, I don't know. Oh, I don't think they've ever really caused me knee problems, though. Say for the fitness community, ask one expert who tells you exercise A is the best, that's what always tells you. Not only is exercise B better than A, but A is also not healthy. <laughs> I just know it's right. Yeah. I don't know, man. Listen to people who know what they're talking about. Try it for yourself. You know? Yep. Is it possible to build muscle loose at the same time? Yeah. If you're new to lifting or you're like really overweight. But it mostly has to do with like being out of shape for the most part, in some way. If you've been training for a long time, usually it's like, spend time building muscle, spend time losing fat, basically. Thanks, Juice, for the two months, man. Big flex for you, appreciate it, dude. Thank you, man. Games and gains. Thank you. Maybe it's lower grip on the trap bar? You can, I don't use it as much as the high grip, though. Certainly can, though. But I, I, I mostly use the, the higher grip. But yeah, certainly could. Yeah, sometimes you just gotta get, get in there and try it out. But yeah, listen to people I've been talking about too. Try to understand what the purpose of, of their content is, right? But yeah, definitely gonna be some experimentation that goes into it, right? I think he spends a lot of his time baiting his community. <laughs> Saying kind of outrageous things and I was like, no way, you're an idiot. He's like, no, you're an idiot. You know, so there is a lot of a lot of engagement by being a bit like, you know, a bit crazy sometimes. But I like him a lot, and I like his stream a lot. His his relationship with his community is not my style, but I understand how it works. <clears throat> you started training a little while ago. Is it 180 grams protein enough? Yeah, that's enough. Yep. BC at greater than retail? Uh, I'm focusing on BC more, but... I still like modern wild style overall better, but very excited about BC, yeah. For sure. For sure. He's pretty athletic when he first started streaming. I just don't think he's been focusing on his athleticism very much, right? I mean, if he, if he got back into working out and stuff, it'd be good. He's focusing a lot on nutrition right now. 
I would argue he's focusing on his Nibia. A certain style that's not really exactly how it works, but I mean, if he's feeling fired up about it and it's getting his chat memeing at him and whatever, it, it works out pretty good, right? Yep. But yeah, I think he's intentionally that way, yeah. But that's, I mean, that's makes him a very successful streamer. I mean, he's one of the, he's, he's popping off, man. his fitness and physique right now, but he's killing it on as a content creator, so different goals, different times, you know? Being a little inflammatory and being a little bit like out there in terms of his nutritional uh, perspectives, I mean, whatever, <laughs> who cares? He's having fun, his chat's having fun, he'll be all right. Gives this community another thing to meme about, right? Drink off Instagram games. I mean, it is. It's just. It has a. It's just nothing. It doesn't really do anything good for you. It's literally a source of calories, but alcohol is an inhibitor of muscle protein synthesis. That's one of the big things. So. I mean, you can have alcohol as part of your your life and still make gains, but it's just not helpful. Yeah. Yep. What does Sauron even look like? Have we ever seen Sauron's face? Is that even a thing that we know? And in terms of growing my hair out, bro, we're, we're past that. <laughs> As an elf? Oh, okay. Gotcha. What am I hopping back on the juice? I've never been on the juice and I don't plan to be on the juice. Does that answer your question? <laughs> no, no juice for me, man. I'm good. I'm good. If you mean like, when am I going to diet down for bodybuilding again? Is that what you mean? If I was on the juice, I wouldn't lose all my gains. I like, it, I like when I die, yeah. I just get bigger and bigger and leaner into the show. Yeah. Pretty funny. Sorry, are you doing this? Yeah. 
Oh, wait, oh, you said, you said some fines. Do you mean fitness? Yeah, Tari's doing great, yeah. For sure. His goals are different than mine, though. His, he has a lot of more, like, movement, almost meditative training style. Or I'm a little bit, like, more, you know, bodybuilding focused, yeah. Happy to watch a real natural on a fake natty. All the time I said playing fitness industry nowadays. Well, my thoughts on, on what? I mean, I'm glad that you enjoy the stream and happy to be a natural athlete for sure. Um, I don't know, maybe I'm just not in the loop uh, about toxicity in the fitness community. I don't know. Yeah, Charlie gained weight getting into his show. Yeah, it's ridiculous. <laughs> it's kind of insane. Like big time cheat codes there for sure. It's kind of insane, huh? Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, like, if people are being dishonest about their drug use and sort of using that to sell products, that's, that, that's pretty uh, immoral, but, you know. Yeah. Twist the younger generation thing that their physique's attainable. Well, what do I think about that? Yeah, that's. I, I think I think it's worse that. I'd say that the, the opposite is actually worse. Is young people thinking they can't achieve a good physique without drugs, right? Because you can get in real good shape without drugs, but yeah. I mean, as a natural athlete, it's a, it's a it's a damn shame. But I know I look better than people on drugs sometimes, right? So I think it's worse when people are saying you can't look like this, which is like a perfectly natural physique, or you can't be this strong, which is a perfectly natural amount of strength to have if you really work at it without drugs. That's what I think is the worst thing. <sighs> Cause that, that, that sucks. Cause that makes, you, that makes people either not try, or makes people ruin their lives by taking drugs when they're a kid. And then they mess their hormones and organs up for the rest of their life. Because this YouTube content creator told them that they can't do this naturally, right? I think that's worse. But yeah, I mean like, Making your own brand of supplements and be like, yeah, this is the supplements that make me 300 pounds jack lean. <laughs> it's like, no, <laughs> probably not. But no, I mean, if you're like, you know, I be a pro and you're on the juice and you're like, hey, this is my supplement line. I like these supplements. That's fine, and sure. These are the supplements I used to like, sure. But yeah. Being, just dishonesty in general is not good, but I mean people who want to make their, their lives as a fitness influencer and want to sort of market their own physique and whatever Sure Do what you want, but yeah, I don't know I don't spend a whole lot of time worrying about it, but I, I see what you mean Just in general dishonesty is not good Manipulate, like manipulating people is not good yeah, right? I saw that bad, Kay. You just, you just trim your trim your stash to uh, your preference. So if you're taking testosterone, most often you're not gonna be able to compete in um, natural bodybuilding. Even if it's like doctor approved, right? That's my understanding. You may be able to find some times to do it, but I don't know, some places, yeah. That's what they say with the cheese. I mean, I don't, I don't really eat a lot of cheese. Yeah. Exactly, Abbas. That's just the worst thing. Yep. Yeah. Uh, I did not, Bruno. No. I did not. Do not. All right. It's possible to go into it. It's possible to go into a diet, be in a deficit, and gain muscle. Yeah. If you're like really new to lifting, yeah. Or if you have a lot of weight to lose, or you're coming back from a long break. Basically, the answer to that is if you're untrained, you can build muscle while losing fat. Basically. That's my understanding, Tava. I'm glad that, you, that you're doing good and taking care of your health, though, but 
If you're if you're taking testosterone, you're probably not gonna be able to compete in natural bodybuilding. Right? At least that's just my understanding. I'm not I'm not the, the I'm not the, the, the decision maker on that. That's just my understanding. Should write a book? I mean, about what? <laughs> I mean, maybe it could be fun, but I mean, right now, I just share the information for free every day, I guess, but I'm not like an expert or anything. Just basic stuff. That's me saying true? Yeah, it's just no reason to put my health at risk, man. That's all there is to it. <clears throat> I want to be run for my family. I want to be able to enjoy training it for my whole life. You know? No reason to put that in, in, at risk. Well, especially when I know I can still make plenty of gains naturally. <clears throat> How long am I bodybuilding? I would say I started focusing on bodybuilding probably about 2013. Um, but I've been lifting weights since I was 12, and I'm 31 now. So I've been in the gym for a long time. But. Actually focusing on bodybuilding was probably 2013. But even then, I, I trained mostly for my enjoyment. So I probably could be a lot better than I am if I was a little bit more focused on progression. But I don't know, I just, I just train because I like it for the most part. And I do compete because I think it, I think that's fun too. But yeah, I mostly just do because I love it. Hurt your wrist off over. So eventually when you're in off-season to see your physique change from living to less lean. Not usually, but you do. There, there is like an amount of like you have to be patient. Yeah. You cut down to 12% body fat and want to do a bulk, don't lose all the hard work you to get down. Just do a small surplus. Yeah. Just, just get up, add calories in slowly. You don't have to throw it all away. But usually, like <laughs> when I've gotten really lean. Like for bodybuilding lean, I'm usually ready to quit being so freaking small at the end of a bulk, <laughs> or at the end of a diet. That's why I usually add calories in pretty quick. I think one of the things that would be cool is to do a shorter competition season and do a more disciplined reverse diet to stay a little leaner. Sometimes I have elbow pain when I lift. Any, any tips on the curve that? I mean, I have very, one, I have very little training. I'm not a doctor, physical therapist or anything. Two, that's very little information, right? Like, where does it hurt? On what lifts? Right? Do I carry? What? I do arena carries? I have. Yeah, I, I would be hesitant to give you advice on that one. Numbers? Uh, I'm 5'11". Uh, about 2'11". Or 2'12". Or 2'10". Oh, um... And I'm eating about 3,000 calories a day right now. Do I carry a gun? You trying to gank me or something? <laughs> I don't really go anywhere. But no, I don't just carry a gun around. No. <laughs> Did I be inside my face by <laughs> No, I just liked it. I was actually surprised that night thing kind of stood out to me. I wasn't planning to play it until I finished the zone. I liked it. Yeah, 
Life Crate's awesome, huh? I mean, I'm, I'm bent there now, but I think Life Crate's awesome. I just swapped over this to level of the Covenant and have some fun with something different. Oh, it looks like I need to go uh, Kyrian next. We'll see. Kyrian Fury sounds really fun. You've heard me, the under six foot building muscle is easier. I mean, I, I'm about six foot. And second of all, people that are like six foot four, six foot whatever, six six, and be like, it's so hard to build muscle because I'm such a fucking gigantic human. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> no. Shut the fuck up. I'm just too big! Shut up. I'm not buying that for a second. Now, I will say that, like, for bodybuilding purposes, it's easier to fill out a smaller frame with muscle, for sure. But these gigantic behemoth human beings are gonna get no sympathy from me, okay? <laughs> You're gonna get no sympathy from me. Eat your food, Train like the fucking Goliath you are, and you're gonna be fine. All right, you're not gonna get any sympathy from me. Yeah, poor, poor, teeny, tiny little half Thor. Can't gain any muscle. Shut up. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> oh. Oh. There we go. No, it's, I, I mean, if you're carrying a gun around, it's freaking weird. In my opinion, no offense, it's weird. I make, it would make me uncomfortable to be around somebody with a gun up on their hip, I, personally. Somebody walking around with an assault rifle on their back, I'm fucking out of there. <laughs> I'm gone. <laughs> Psychos. If you want to defend yourself, we should always just ban guns and everybody should just learn Kung Fu. It's freaky. We don't need to get too deep into that, but that, 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 that's just weird, for my opinion. I feel like that's made, they make me real uncomfortable to see somebody just walk around strapped up, personally. Put a martial arts with a gun? Yeah, so ban them. Get rid of guns and just learn martial arts. Just go back to the days where somebody, you know, Somebody decides to act a fool, you gotta just go do a little quick kung fu battle. Call it good. Yeah. That's what I'm saying, just have an honor duel. <laughs> just get rid of firearms and just have honor duels. Call it good. Yeah, learn telekinesis, yeah. Just like, have a wizard's duel, just a mind battle, and then be like, we cool? Get on with your day, you know? Yeah. Mike, thanks for the 26 months, man. Big flex. We're welcome back, dude. Thank you. Long bicep and stuff. Yeah, but see, long is, like, long is searching me, you can build big old muscle. Yeah, big old muscle. But yeah, I mean, like I said, people who are like, you know, six foot eight, they're not gonna get any sympathy from me, like, oh, it's hard to build muscle. It's like, okay, dude. You freaking titan. Quit whining. Quit whining about it. Yeah, that's freaky. Just like, I don't know. Maybe I'm just a little, just a little hippie boy, but like, I don't know. Just walking around and knowing everybody around me just got a gun on their hip, that, that, that makes that make me very uncomfortable. Because I don't trust people, man. People are stupid. I don't know. <laughs> It's just weird to me, but anyway. That's a different sort of thing. Tall people absolutely can build muscle. <laughs> but yeah, I think six foot is kind of tall for bodybuilding, but it's just because you can fill out a, 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 a smaller frame more easily, but I wouldn't necessarily say it. It's easier to build muscle as a, as a shorter person, but aesthetically, your frame looks more full if you're a little bit shorter, shorter right? So, yeah, there we go.
I don't know. Maybe maybe it's something wrong with me, but no, if I see somebody with like a, a, a gun and a holster, I'm still wondering, like, what, what is wrong with this person? Like, are, are they like a law enforcement official or why do they have a gun? Like, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a little concerned. This is me being a little hippie boy, though, like I said. I don't know. Oh, shh. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, man. Somebody's a, got a gun, I'm out. <laughs> Gotta go. I don't, I don't trust people, man. The psychos. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, Dwight Howard, they just call fouls on him when he's big. It's ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> And keep in mind, guys, right now, is we're doing a big sponsored stream on the front page of Twitch today, so Automod is, like, at maximum strength. So if you're cursing in your message, it's going to get deleted. Just heads up. <sighs> That'll answer your question, my night. Yeah. Oh. I care, but you never knew it. Yeah. That's weird. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. That's weird. <laughs> to me, but... Yeah. Weird. Yeah. <laughs> Not hot there? Not yet. It's, it's kind of morning time still. I just like to live in an environment where people don't like, I don't know, they don't feel the need to just carry a gun around all the time. This is weird. My, I don't know. Because I feel like if you have a gun, it's like, I don't know. Like, you're, you're, you're already living in like a heightened state of fear if you think you need a gun just to go to the grocery store, you know what I mean? Like, that's like it like already speaks to your psychology in my opinion, but maybe I don't understand, right? Yeah, I'm gone, okay? I am gone. I'm out. Yeah. Oh, better to have it not need it. Yeah, I mean, I, I understand the things that people say, but like... I don't know, man. I don't know, man. Oh, I get it. I just, uh, I mean, I, I, I understand that people say that. It's just... I mean, I grew up in the South, man. It's, it's weird to me. Oh. You have, you have an instrument strapped to your body that can take away somebody's life in one second, whether you have like, where you're just like completely just like, an, untra like an untrained noob. Some idiot makes one wrong decision in their life and you just kill somebody. That doesn't make any sense. Why do you need that strapped to your body at all times? It's like... I don't want to get too... too weird with today's discussion, but that, that, that is something that really freaks me out, for sure. Like I said, maybe I'm just a hippie, but... that just doesn't make any sense. You know? I don't know. Is someone built like you wanted to fight somebody built like me? I was gonna jump Are you gonna shoot him? You're gonna so first of all, like, hopefully you're not in a situation where people are just gonna fight you randomly. If that's your life, I'm sorry, that sucks. But like, are you gonna kill somebody? Uh, that, that, that's crazy, huh? Because if I'm in a situation and someone brings out a gun against me, like, first of all, that never was, hopefully that never happens. But if somebody brings out a gun, I'm like, this person wants to kill me. This situation has escalated tremendously. And it might not necessarily make me lack, act, like, less aggressively, right? I hope that never happens. But if somebody, I mean, I'm going to try to, like, diffuse the situation for sure. But if somebody, like, to me, that, that's like, this person wants to kill me now. 
Like, maybe I was upset before, but now I'm in danger of my life being taken away. This, this has escalated tremendously. Do I have to figure out how to kill this person now? Before they can hurt me or people around me, right? And that's like, hopefully that never, ever, ever happens to anybody. But the, what I'm saying is the fact that somebody has on their person an, an, an instrument of death at all times, instant death at all times, take away someone's whole life, everything they've done up till now, everything they could possibly do in their future could be taken away in one second because someone makes a bad call is nuts, in my opinion. That's insane. Because people respond differently to threats, people respond differently to fear, right? I don't know, man. I do not trust most people with, like, doing the right thing in a battleground, let alone the right thing with, like, a life and death weapon, right? I don't know. But like I said, I don't want to get too crazy. I, I'm just like, I don't know. We should probably stop talking about it, but I don't know. I don't know. I don't know, man. Yeah, I, I think, Beer Me, I think I would like to ha have a couple different things happen to make situations like that just not a threat for people all the time, right? Are we having a, have, you know, a situation where you are in a, in a life and death peril situation as as part of your day, you know? And, there, and that's, that's more work potentially, but, you know, having people have, like, you know, taking better care of people in general so that they're not so desperate yeah. and angry might help too. That, that's a big problem, right? Yeah. Oh All right, I'm do a little quick set. What's up, Mr. But yeah, I know, I'm, I'm a big hippie, you could big bleeding heart liberal, but okay. like not really, but you know. Okay, Daddy, go for it. Oh, I want people to be safe, but I don't think that's adds to safety. Wow. Overall. Oh my god, I just is so strong with Daddy. Good job. I don't care to make you feel safe. No, I don't get it. But what, what do you do it for? Does it make you feel safer? I mean, I want people around me to feel safe. I want people to just like, you know. You just walk around being like, yeah, I can kill anybody if I needed to. Like, is that, I don't know. Tank tops he's got. I, I ordered a couple yeah. more. Yeah. Tyler, I, I'm starting to get the idea. Of what what your objective is here? I get it. They're just kind of spitting out the the, the flashcards. I get it. Yeah, it's all good. I got you. Get too real, yeah. Oh. Great. I said we're having super serial discussions and it's early. Huh? Oh no, I said we're having super serial discussions and it's early. Just a teeny bit. <laughs> Somebody asked me one question, so. Let's Flashcards for a reason. What is that reason? Uh, 
Super jet. No, no, I mean, sword fights, you know, you, even even the swords might be a little too much, you know, you can lose limbs and stuff like that. Never lived in the hood, I've never had one of those, thankfully. I understand that those, that's, that's an area that's very, very rough. And unfortunately, a lot of, you know, disadvantage is present in that whole environment, which sucks. So hopefully, if there was could be some support for people to not be in such a dire situation, you know, it wouldn't be so tough, potentially. That that's Wait, aren't you like in my uninformed idealist opinion, it's like let's help people who are struggling so that they don't have to have such a rough time and places places aren't so rough. The hard thing with that, which I understand, is um and it's honestly <laughs> the struggle with basically everything is politics. <laughs> People are I gotta do a little set here, boy. Don't help. Yeah. And that's the problem. Yeah. That's true. That's true. That's how daddy does it. Archer, you push on it, but daddy needs it to grow. When you get when you get taller, you can do that, okay? Yeah. You might not reach really well. So now now we gotta go all the way back to the beginning and ask, why did you ask that bad one of you? What, what was the motivation of the question? We got we got to go all the way back because we're now now we're blaming you Whoa. for all of it. <laughs> what was the point? You put it in there. Wow! You're gonna do big weights in a big weight. Do decide to stay strapped at all times. It's just, I'm, I'm just gonna be honest with you. It made me uncomfortable, but no, that, no. I'm asking, I'm asking, why did you do it? Not like, why would you do that? Like, I'm asking, like, what, what was your curiosity? What was your motivation? Your curiosity. I feel like there's such like a well, cultural or do you, like kind of like where yeah, yeah, cultural thing about about that. Yeah, because well, that's, that, that's the other thing people get, get, I'm not sure if this is what you're talking about, this is where you're going with this, but getting gas after swinging a wiffle bat, oh yeah. I mean, if people had to like actually engage in like melee combat, like they would just get tired. <laughs> they, would just, they would just tire out and, and get over whatever they were fighting about. They'd just tire out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Have you ever had to, Mark? I hope not. I hope not. Oh, yep. Cause it's relevant. Why? Oh, so you, are, are you? Is that you just wanted to just get a sort of hot topic going? Go. Sure. Fair enough. There Right. We're talking about we're talking about if guns were not part of the picture, Mark. I understand that if somebody has a gun, that they might they feel like they might want to use it in a, in a, in a moment of anger or fear or whatever and i just think that taking somebody's life like that is like i don't know i will say i, don't, I, I just think that sucks that there have been times i will acknowledge where people caring have been a good thing in um for example there was a shooting at a mall thanks for that for 34 months my big flex for it in my state and an off-duty officer happened to be carrying in a location where you weren't, it was like illegal to, but he was an officer and he was you, able to say- Are you are you legally allowed to carry if you're an officer? I don't know. Even off duty? See, and that's what I, I think that it was like, okay, but anyway, more often than not, that doesn't happen, but I see where there's been circumstances where that's been helpful. Still not the got there, yeah. Yeah. Here we go. What is that fan doing? What is that man doing? Here we go. Here we go. But like I said, I mean, like the guy was a officer, so for him to have a gun is like understandable. But to have, you know, I don't know. It's just it. It is. It's. I I prefer. Oh, I mean, like the idea that like somebody with a concealed carry can potentially stop a bad situation isn't entirely made up. It's not just a no, made up. No, but but the. Oh, 
fact that someone can be crazy and also carry, and you you can't right. distinguish the two until someone right. starts shooting is the problem. Right. You know, I mean, a police officer having a, a weapon is like I get that. Jeffy, thank, thank you. Thank you so much for the big ten. Ten, thank you. Thank you so much, dude. All right, do you want to see this? All right, here we go. This yeah, I don't think it, I don't think it's like made up. Yeah, here we go. Right, more accidents happen I than the people using them to yeah. defend themselves. Like, that's yeah. true. For sure, yeah. Yeah, you do it with daddy. Oh, Listen, I have to help you with some little things. Okay, you do it. Mama won't be a game star, I promise. I just poked your toes. Stay right there with daddy. Whoa, good job. Archer, look with daddy. Environments in general were not dangerous for people to just be where they where they are and conduct their lives. Be out in their world without being in fear. 
You know? This is what it is. Yeah. Well, I feel you sick. Like I'm saying, I, I would just like to be in an environment where I'm not like constantly under threat of that, right? And I, I'm not, but I don't want anybody to be under threat of that. You know what I mean? You've got to do a little set, boy. Scoot it on back, boy. There you go. Hey! There you go. You can't make clips anymore. Uh, it's clips are a, currently a sub only thing. It just cuts down on the. Uh... Oh my God! I beat Bajira. I killed Bajira in a battleground. Bajira sucks. Look, clips, which aren't a big deal, but I do find them annoying enough to be like, you know, let's just have people clip who have like, you know, the intention of doing it in a way that's like positive, clipping cool stuff, and it just kind of cuts down on the negativity that I have to encounter during my day. Maybe I'm just a baby about it, but when I look at my clips and it's like, look at this, Vajira sucks clips. It's like, this is my, like, why are you watching my stream and clipping this? Like, what is wrong? Like, why are you in here? <laughs> it's like people, people who just like watch your stream to like see you mess up and then you want to clip it and be like, you know, it's like, ah, oh, I just don't want to like, I, I just don't want to encounter that. 
I don't want to like dig into that psychology. It doesn't doesn't do me any good. So they love you, really? Yeah, well, they can sub then. That sounds great. <laughs> but yeah, subs can clip, mods can clip. Yep. If I go to look at my clips, I'm like, ooh, did we have anything fun to share? Like from like our games? Like, oh, this was neat. We had some fun BGs today. And then it's just like, you know, stuff being rude. It's like, okay, that's, it's not cool. You know? So I just, you know, I'm just cutting down on the negativity that I see as a content creator. And, and it has, it's cut down a lot. It's great. But unfortunately it does cut down on the clips that viewers enjoy the stream who just want to clip cool moments. It does unfortunately have that negative impact too, but, and you know, it's whatever, it's whatever. Sorry about that, you guys. Oh, here we go. Let's get, get moving. Uh, I think we need to add a little more weight to this in a second, right? Oh. That's still good. You'll build on that, right? That's true, Jeffy, pretty soon. Everybody's gonna be a sub in here. <laughs> if Jeffy keeps this up, thank you again, man. You rock, dude. <laughs> That's true. Pretty soon everybody's gonna be a sub. Whew. Oh, man. Yeah, I don't know, it's taking us forever to get warmed up today. things. And four, don't worry about your testosterone. <laughs> Focus on the things that make your training the best it can be, your diet the best it can be, and your sleep the best it can be. Not only will that help your testosterone, it actually has a way bigger impact than your testosterone anyway. Fixating on testosterone, I think, is missing the point. I mean, as long as you're in a healthy range, you're fine. You probably are. But, yeah. For testicles don't do anything, they, they're not gonna have any, a big impact on testosterone. It's just like, maybe they'll have like vitamin D, zinc, which are important for hormone health, but it's not gonna be like a big boost. It's not gonna increase it much and that amount that it increases isn't gonna be significant for muscle building or body fat loss purposes anyway. 
You can look at like a multivitamin, basically. Some herbal stuff that might be good for you in general, but it's not gonna be a big, not gonna have a big impact. So basically, if you wanna buy a test booster, just don't buy an expensive one, because it's not really gonna do anything. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, both vitamins are good. But yeah, don't worry about your testosterone. Focus on your training, your diet, and your sleep for gains. That's the most important thing. Your hormones will be, you know, happy if you do all those things well, but like I said, it's not gonna be the big determining factor of whether you make gains or not. It's probably mostly about how you eat. <laughs> don't eat enough, you're not gonna make gains. Or you're not gonna lose fat if you don't eat a deficit, right? That kind of thing. Should put on that little wristy wraps. Might be, might should. Yeah. I think people get a little bit overly fixated on on hormones. And it's mostly just about, you know, like training for sufficient volume and progressive overload. Eating a surplus, you want to build muscle and get good sleep. What heart rate do you try to maintain center while lifting? I'm not really worried about my heart rate too much when I'm lifting. My whoop tracks it for me so I can always look, but I don't think my heart rate gets, all, gets up that high most of the time for lifting. Lifting is mostly about activating your muscle rather than your heart. But if you're trying to do cardio and trying to build cardiovascular endurance and wanted to hit a certain heart range, for certain things, sometimes you want to stay below like a certain thing for like a recovery day. Sometimes you want to make sure your workouts take you above a certain number for like a, a training day. I'm not doing much cardio, but I'm trying to add in some cardio. Got to got to feel, got to feel it out. Figure out how I'm gonna do that. But I'd like to do some cardio. Yeah. On days where I have meetings, I can't. Like I could do some cardio today. And then when I start working out in the afternoon, I might do, I might finish my workouts with some cardio in the afternoon. That'd be nice. It's gonna be a little heavy. Trying to run too much weight, start to lose too much weight. I mean, you could eat a little more if you want to do more cardio for your cardiovascular fitness. Just gotta eat a little more. Yup. Yup. What's up, Ron? Oh. It's taking me all day to get warmed up, but we're getting there. We're getting there. Oof. I wanted to go to the gaming stream relatively early today. We'll see how it goes. Maybe just do a couple more sets real quick. Oh. Took me all day to get feeling right. But we're up, we're up for a pretty funny stream today on the gaming stream. Should be a lot of fun. I'm gonna be doing a big sponsored stream. We're gonna be getting some front page Exposure, front page loving from Twitch. And I'm gonna be playing a healer. <laughs> it'll, it'll start to make sense when you see what the sponsor is. That's pretty funny. You may have already seen it if you guys are here in the beginning. Yeah, that should be fun. Stream. 
the train cooler with legs on. I, mean, I, I train abs just every day. He could. Now, I don't have been training them very much recently, but I, abs are not tied to leg day now, not necessarily. Yeah. But I burn so much regardless, I have to put in work to gain. Well, I mean, you, you gotta. You have to, you know, put some sort of stimulus on your muscle to grow, yeah. But if you ate enough, you could sit around and gain weight, but that's not necessarily what you want, right? That might not be what you're looking for. But yeah. In order to grow muscle, you gotta have some stimulus, right? Yeah. Eating comes large part of lifestyle? Yeah, you got to. You got to. Just off you. No, I know what you mean. Like, I'm telling you, if you ate enough, you wouldn't necessarily shrink. But yes, I feel you. I'm on for Alina for Classic. They're gonna be playing um, Shadowlands today uh, for the sponsored portion of the stream. And then we'll uh, get back to Classic afterwards. It'll be fun, it'll be a good day. I'm just gonna do a few more sets of this and then uh, probably have to wrap it up so we can get on stream relatively soon. But yeah, it's kinda of taking all day to get warmed up. But we, we had some, some fun chats today at least, right? Uh, I'm excited for you to get back into a surplus, Quaylen. Gotta get you feeling good. <sighs> Definitely could, Cowbell, yeah. Yeah, as long as you're in a deficit, you'll get leaner. I think weight training is great. But yeah, I mean, if you just want to do cardio and eat right, eat your deficit, yeah. Now you don't have to exercise at all, and you can lose weight, but I think exercise is great. And if you prefer cardio to weights, sure. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> but I was a runner who went to the gym as well, so I know the, I know the, the feeling of needing to eat a lot, I feel you. Well, I wasn't really a small kid though either, I was, I was a big for a runner, but. Quick we might have to bring Quick we back in, in TBC, we'll see. We'll see. Might have to, huh? Better. Yeah. 
Get a bike, yeah, I want to get like a Zwift. <laughs> so I can do like bike races in the garage on stream. That'd be fun, huh? Be fun. Like about 40% car weight, that's fine, yeah. That's fine. I absolutely respect that. I would like to do more cardio. It's just like a time and recovery issue. You know? Yep. All right. Yeah, Peloton, I, I, I think that's more like classes and I want to just, I just want to race people. <laughs> how, to, how to train to jump higher? I'll look up like knees over toes guy for like knee strengthening stuff in particular, but I mean like explosive, explosive jumping stuff. It's good stuff. Yep. Yep. I think he's like super, super passionate about that. Thanks, I don't think I've ever had bad knees, but I could definitely be a little more springy <laughs> than I currently am. Definitely. Yep. Oh boy. Here we go. Here we go. That really is sad. Here we go. Just makes me uh, not able to lift anymore, Gordius. <sighs> yeah. Just, yeah. Maybe, maybe just DM stuff like that in the future for me, if you don't mind. Yeah. I don't need that in my brain. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, okay. Oh my goodness. Yeah, as, with as much running as I've done over the years, I mean, like, my knees are still happy, so that's good. Glad, glad for that. Oh, I know, I'm just being sensitive, but yeesh. That's sad. Until now to get warmed up today, but that's okay. We'll build off the, of this workout. All right. Oof. Nice friend. Yeah, we'll we'll be getting you some some fresher clips to work with for sure. Yeah. That makes sense to me, but I like that too. Some activation. 
some activation. slap some fury commentary on it. I mean, we got to. Got to. Uh, I mean, I generally would recommend the protein after so that you're not trying to digest whey protein during your workout, but up to you, I guess. Right? Yeah. to finish off that one set. Yeah, we got enough work done today. I, I do want to try to get back on the stream pretty quick, so. I mean, what you can do is you can just get like a bike and then there's like little stands that create resistance for it. That, that could be a thing, right? Yep. Let me try to get these weights off of here and that'll be the end of our workout uh, for now. But yeah, um, I'm thinking we're gonna start doing some uh, afternoon workouts. I know it's usually the morning stuff, but I feel like there's gonna be some advantages to afternoon, and, and I'm, I'm just curious to see um, how it goes. If we decide to do some afternoon workouts. Ugh. So make sure you, uh, you tune in for that. It should be a lot of fun. Like I said, it's going to be me uh, me healing <laughs> in World of Warcraft, which is, like I said, once you, once you see the sponsors, it's going to make a lot of sense because <laughs> this is a product that the people healing me are going to need. <laughs> or so the people I'm healing are going to need. So it should be a lot of fun. Yeah, that's today. Um, we're gonna get warmed up. The, the the big sponsored stream start around noon PST and go till around two PST. So that'd be fun. Big time, big time. Looking forward to hanging out for that. But we will see you guys there. Uh, be, I should be want to be back on the stream probably about 20 minutes, so around 10 a.m. PST. Get things rolling on a classic. Get warmed up. Swap over to the to Shadowlands a little early to get set up. Then get after it. And we have a game for you guys to play on stream too. So get ready for that. Should be a lot of fun. See you guys very very soon. Peace.